let's talk about philosophy and OER. Um, could you introduce yourself? What's your context between philosophy and open education? Hi, I'm Markus, Markus Steinmann. I'm an educational scientist, actually not a philosopher, but I'm very interested in philosophy about open ed. I think you aren't you a philosopher by training or something? Um, not originally. So my degree is in education, not in philosophy. But you can ask more Rob about that. Uh, hi, I'm Rob Farrow. I'm a research fellow at the Open University in the UK. Uh, I am a trained philosopher. I have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in philosophy. But saying that, I work as an educational scientist and have done for the last 10 years. We're actually at a conference right now and you had a talk on philosophic questions on OER. What's the five minute version? Yeah, it's more about an introduction to get people think about open education, OER, in terms of philosophy. So it's practicing philosophy, it's not a talk about philosophy. I think that's right. I think philosophy is best understood as an activity rather than a body of knowledge. Um, and our goal, I think, is to encourage people who are already kind of time pressured and maybe doing a bit of OER and open education work is already kind of expecting a lot from them. But to try and get them to reflect just a little bit differently about the reasons why they do what they do, to see the bigger picture, to understand the foundation for what they do, um, and hopefully to try and make it a little bit more um, rational in some way, I guess by appealing to people's sense of consistency and uh, and the logic of their approach. Don't people sometimes think that's disturbing what they're doing? Um, well, if all you're asking someone to do is reflect on what they're doing, I don't see how that disturbs it in, in itself. It may be that the reflections end up being disturbing, but as you say, it could be that could be a positive disruption in some way. Um, again, like, philosophy is not really telling someone what to do. It's a way of encouraging reflection rather than um, communicating a set of values necessarily. Um, but there are so many assumptions in what we do in open education. There are so many assumptions in education itself, you know, about what is education, how does it work philosophically, what's going on there. Um, when we talk about open education, we introduce a whole new level of complexity and questions around values and epistemology and so on. Uh, so. Although some people would probably say this is not really helping them practically, I would say you're already doing something and all that philosoph philosophizing about it will really do is give you a slightly more refined perspective on what you do and maybe help you to plan future activity and collaboration. Any example from, from the workshop you had today? Yeah, we were introducing an argument about education is broken. And by that we mean not the Silicon Valley version, where they introduce technological solutions for problems they define, but to talk about the disruption of education when it's opened and the sometimes lack of an underlying educational foundation. So that's what we mean by uh, education is broken. And this led to the question of how can a philosoph or the educational philosophy be defined or what is this? And we were arguing that it's not one educational philosophy but many. Mm -hmm. And so and to engage people in, in thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I think that's right and it partly reflects diversity in the context that people are doing this work. They've got different priorities and different interests. Um, and obviously there is no one single approach to all this that's going to make sense to everyone in all places. If there is, it might be quite abstract. So something like social justice, for instance, people have congregated around as an idea. It means kind of different things in different contexts a lot of the time, but it's, it's general enough for people to coalesce around it and to engage with it. So, but the question is with open education, it doesn't really have a sort of well-codified philosophy. And you could say, and we're not saying necessarily that you have to have one, I think, but you know, it could be that it doesn't need one. It could be that it's, it's a sort of pragmatic thing, it's not ideologically very heavy, and it's just about kind of finding solutions to problems or something like that. And some people have outlined that to me as their vision of open education. It's just not ideological, it's not theoretical. Personally, I think there's no such thing as a non-ideological position. There's no, there's no view from nowhere, right? 
everyone already has interests, everyone has commitments, values, assumptions and so on. So to me the question is how can we uncover our assumptions? How can we make them more rational? How can we um, make our behavior more consistent? And philosophy is, is nothing more than uh, a tool for doing that, to facilitate the right kind of reflection. It doesn't have to have a big theory attached to it, but it would be nice if we could have at least an attempt at a big theory of the philosophy of open education. Okay, so let's maybe leave our audience with, with a specific question to ponder about their own foundations for their work. What would be the question? Two questions, maybe. I can share with you one thought that I had when I was preparing for this talk, which is to do with decolonization. And so some people will say, in open education, we have the opportunity to decolonize uh, curricula yeah. by enabling people from the Global South, for instance, more women and so on, to have input and control over curriculum and that kind of thing. And it kind of made me think along the lines of, if we decolonize curriculum, is that fulfilling the project of the Enlightenment or undermining the project of the Enlightenment? And I think that's a very deep question that I would just, that's, I would encourage people to think about that one. I got an easier one. Oh, it refers back to this education is broken notion. So to, to think about your educational activities, what you do, what you achieve, or what you aim to achieve in your teaching, and then think about this, um, does this all lead to a common body of, of philosophy or principles? Or are there maybe contradicting values or principles where you derived your activities? So maybe this... It's an easy start, or more easy a start. Mm -hmm. Just making explicit what's already implicit, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for sharing these thoughts and questions with us. Now it's up to you. <laughs>